butter is solidifying in the cold steak. So it's just like clumps of butter that are going to melt as it cooks. Oh my god, that was a big squirt. All right. Are you happy? Are you happy? Are you, are you satisfied? Have you been thoroughly stabbed and injected? I think so. I can't believe how much butter is like all up in the steak right now. Okay, now I'm just gonna stab it. Stab, stab, stab. Stab, stab, stab. Okay. Is that it? Is it all? I can't tell. Is it all, am I all out? Oh, I'm all out, okay. Now, we'll do a teeny bit of this seasoning on the outside because that's what Edrin said to do that one time. And I remember I've done this before once and it really was delicious. Like one of the best steaks I had was the time that I added just a little bit of fish sauce to the outside. And it did give it kind of like a dry aged steak tasty time to it. But it makes sense too, right? Because fish sauce is one, umami, just umami in a bottle, and it is aged itself. Like fish sauce is aged. So it makes sense that it kind of tastes like that. All right. I also want to scrape up Shama dish bits and put it back. Or I guess we can put it in the bag and then put this, the parts that didn't make it, we can just shove it in there. All right. Get into the chapa. More like the bag, but you know what I mean. All right, now we scrape up all of this butter grate and stuff. Throw you in there. Flip you over. Get more of you in there. And while we're at it, let's just pour all the shit in there too. Bloop! Nothing can stop us. Okay. And currently the beef is cold. Yep, yep. Insert all the inappropriate jokes you want. No pun intended, Mrs. Meat Injector. Pun intended. I'm enjoying the meat injector. It's weird because we had that other one for years and we never used it. And now that we got this new one and we had that conversation with chat where chat gave me tons of ideas of what to do with it. I think I'm turning a new leaf. I am now pro meat injector. I'm all down for it. I have like all this delicious smelling stuff on my hand right now. Uh, I can't type fast enough to make it inappropriate jokes. It's all good, Camisa. Um, yep, and it turned this cold. Okay, so the potato fries are in the air fryer. We will know soon if I've made delicious or committed crimes against food. I don't think you can do, you can't commit crimes against food. There's, I don't think, unless you, unless you do a Kathy and you burn it to all shit. If you turn it black and charred, that might be a crime against all food. But it's just deliciousness in an air fryer. Can't go wrong. Sorry, I had to close the door because I let the dog out. All right, where did I put the where did I where did I put the vacuum sealer? Did I put it away? No. Yep. There it is. All right. I'm just moving this thing all over the kitchen. So we'll put it over here because it's kind of loud. And now we must seal our lustat steak. Excuse me, dog. All right. Ah! Slipped. Okay, ready? Go, go. Oh, it's not on. <laughs> I was like, why isn't it sealing? You gotta turn it on, Kathy. Okay. And because it's got like marinated juiciness in, I didn't, I didn't wait for it to self-seal. I had to aggressively seal it so that the juices didn't shoot up into my machine, which is what happened before when I did Kali marinades. And I was like, oh my god, it's such a bitch to clean. Oh, right. Oh, that's a sexy steak right there. It's pretty sexy. Oh, yeah. Juice and sauce and ah, oh, so good. Okay. Then we're going to stick this in here. Be good. And now that's going. Okay. That's a big bloody mess right there. Oh, it goes with the theme of the night. Blooded vampires. I'm going to rinse this off because it's a bloody mess. Clean as you go. They always say clean as you go. All right. Does anyone know how long it should be? Is it 
15 minutes or is it an hour? It's probably like 30 minutes. Let's look it up. How long to sous vide a steak? How long to sous vide steak? Um, it says for rare, very rare. Holy shit, it's way too hot. Supposed to be 129. All right, we're going to do one, one, two. Hmm. I have an idea. It's a bad idea, but I'm going to do it. Please hold. two hours. Okay, so now we have to set it for one hour. We'll actually do 45 minutes. No, we'll do one hour, like you said. Mm -hmm. 120. Okay, it is set for one hour at 120. One hour, 120. All right. Whew. Immersion heater. I've always wanted to try one of those. Yes, it's a sous vide machine and an immersion circulator. Yes. And it goes really well with the vacuum sealer. The, I, I originally got the vacuum sealer for like zombie apocalypse prep. So it's just good to like, it extends the shelf life of things like rice and whatnot. So that's why I got it. Also, I dehydrate a lot of stuff and it's a good way to store dehydrated foods, like I used to do dehydrated apples, bananas, yada, 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 all the time. That's where I originally got it, and now I got a sous vide machine. Oh my god, you guys, that was clutch. We did it. We saved the steak. Whew, that was scary. Scared myself. Redeeming, cook for Lana. Cook for Lana, heard. Thank you for that jelly belly. She will be so happy. We have so much meat in the house right now, so she will be ecstatic, because she will definitely be getting some food tasting. Uh, all right, probably closer to an hour. Yeah, ice cubes. Yeah, ice and salt. I didn't put ice. The the sous vide machine. I didn't read ahead of time before I said it. The sous vide machine was 20 degrees too hot because I like my steaks rare or under rare, like very rare. So it's 120 degrees, not 139 or whatever I had it at. So I had to somehow drop the temperature. Cold water wasn't dropping it enough, so I ended up putting ice cubes in it, and that fucking dropped the temperature real fast. So now it's actually at 120 where it's supposed to be. We're gonna do it for an hour. This is one to two and a half hours. I'm going to do it for one hour and then I'm gonna fucking sear the shit out of it, which is gonna cook it a little bit more anyways. Um, I like my outside like hot. What we're going to do is we're gonna fill the entire kitchen with smoke because I'm gonna get my cast iron piping hot and then I'm gonna sear it about 90 seconds on each side and then I'll do a little bit around the outside and then when my cast iron is just billowing smoke I'll throw it in the oven so that we don't have to have all the smoke in the air. Bad ideas are roots of good ideas. I like it. I like it very much. Sometimes it's our uh when we get what is it the uh, fuck with I'm so bad at remembering quotes but the gist of the quote is when we are put in uh Try, tr troublesome or um, 
tricky situations, those are the times where uh, invention and creativity are, like that's when genius ideas happen, is you have to have adversity for creativity, something like that, I fucking can't remember it. But yeah, when you get stuck in a shitty situation, you use your creativity and get out of it, and then you come up with really fun, interesting hacks. Adversity is the foundation of creativity. I don't fucking remember what it's called. Yeah. The profile of the chair and the pen, the head looks odd. Oh, yeah. He looks, he does look kind of weird, doesn't he? All right. Let's, why don't you be more friendly to chat? There you go. Chat missed you. There you go. He's pretty happy. His nose is getting really flat. We might have to get a new one. There we go. Now we're good. Like skinny, bod, giant head on. Yeah, no, he looked weird. I don't like it when the panda head is like staring at me in a creepy manner. So this is good. This is good. This is good now. Jelly Belly, thank you. Redeemed cook for Lana. All righties. Where's the Lana pit? Oh, did I season it? I did season it. Good on me. That's where it is. Nice. So I've been doing this thing where every day I put the Lana pan in the air fryer. I oil it, turn it upside down, and I put it in the air fryer on the bake setting at 350 for one hour, and I do that every single day. Because I'm basically trying to expedite this thing having as good of a seasoning as all my other cast irons. Um, and it's not the same brand, so I think it's gonna need extra, extra love. But I do notice that the nonstick is building up quicker. So I just, every, I don't know how long it's gonna take. It could take like a freaking, year of doing it every single day for it to be as smooth as my oh so sexy dish one I need to oil this one um but this one's got like the sexiest coat on it ever oh, so good what am I doing oh yeah cook for Lana what do we want to do for Lana what do we want to do for Lana I could cook up some more pork belly let's see we got some cheese what else do we have for Lana Got a lot of fire left in me. Thank you. Thank you, Hyper, for that. It, oh, I was wrong. Today is the 303rd stream today. I thought it was 302. Thank you, Hyper, with that daily dono for the kids. Uh, $3.03 signifying my 300. Got a lot of fire left in me. Thank you. Hyper, you did two of them? Was that a whoopsies? Weird. I only did it once. I don't know. I thought you did it twice, but... Or maybe the alert just fired twice. Either way, sometimes my Streamlabs is twitchy, but thank you so much for that $3.03 for the kids. That is going to Extra Life, which is our current campaign on behalf of the Good Cause Crusaders. We are raising money for, Se or for Seattle Children's Hospital, our local Miracle Network Hospital. For anyone who doesn't know, Seattle Children's is a really uh, near and dear cause to our heart because that Miracle Network Hospital has helped three out of four of our babies in emergency situations. We absolutely adore Seattle Children's Hospital. And with Extra Life, hence the chair, uh, those funds are going to Seattle Children's to use as unrestricted funds to help all of their most important initiatives that they're working on right now. Anything from helping kids with cancer to the Autism Center, which we're really big fans of, and um, helping kids with pyloric stenosis whose families can't afford surgery, which is another one of the things that happened to us. So thank you so, so, so much, Hyper for your unrelenting support of us in the AFK Kitchen, our team, the Good Cause Crusaders, and the patients, parents, and providers at these Miracle Network Hospitals. Go Extra Life! Thank you so much. Yes, we swear a lot, we drink a lot, and we talk about inappropriate topics. This is a charity stream where we raise money for the kids, and our shadow always reminds us, we do it for the kids, we just don't want the kids here. This is an 18 year, old, 18 year older and up stream, so if you are under 18 years old and we find out, you will get banned. So. Please don't be under 18 if you're here. And if you are, please don't be stupid enough to tell us in chat because my mods will ban you. Okay. Immersion Eater, I've always wanted those. Evil Marksman, you should totally get one. Also today I learned what brandy was. Now I want to try ribeye basted with honey, soy, and oyster sauce to serve sticky rice. Oh, that sounds really good. Oyster sauce. Mmm, you speak my language. I think oyster sauce is one of those sauces that people, like, Unless you cook a lot of Asian food, I don't, I don't think you understand the greatness that is oyster sauce and Maggie's soy seasoning. We use that shit in everything. But a lot of people just, they use hoisin, like, as their, like, thick, sticky, black seasoning sauce or whatever. 
I personally, like hoisin is good in some situations. I personally love oyster sauce more. Like if you want a really easy chicken marinade, like let's say you're too lazy to make teriyaki, it's just oyster sauce and sweet chili sauce, 50-50, one and one, you know, one, one to one ratio. You mix that shit up, throw it on chicken, cook that shit up, it is so freaking good. It's like a really lazy, easy version of like a teriyaki, kind of. It's with a little bit of a kick, but I love oyster sauce. I love oyster sauce. I grew up with all Southeast Asians, so, and Koreans and Japanese, but yeah, my all my friends, we cook with the same ingredients, and I'm surprised how many people don't know what oyster sauce is, or, or how they use it, or that it's a fucking amazing. When do babies eat solids? Uh, they start around six months old, and then it's a gradual process. Uh, around one years old, they should be eating solids. Sous vide baby food seems like a cool idea. Yeah, you could do that, yeah. Baby food is so easy to make. You, you could, if you have a blender, you can make all the baby food you want. Yeah. Also, do you have to use vac bags? Hmm. I think you can use really sturdy Ziploc bags if you clip the bag to, if you clip, clip the bag to the edge of the pot and it's a really thick or you double up a Ziploc or a zip top bag, that will be okay. The reason why you want um, it vacuum sealed is because if you have it in a big ass pot and the water's all circulating, it's just gonna like float all around. You don't want that shit to explode. If it explodes in your pot, then the food will get up in the sous vide machine and break it. However, if you clip it to the side so it's not floating all around and uh, you, you make sure that it doesn't move, I think it should be okay. Yeah, I could try that as an experiment one time. Uh, vacuum, vacuum sealed bags makes it easier, but I do believe you can use doubled up Ziploc bags. Cabeza. Another thing I've heard but never really researched, I remember reading that while storing things in plastic is mostly fine, cooking them in it was possibly introducing chemicals into your body that wouldn't be there if, say, cooked on a grill. Yeah. A thing I read specifically while researching South Vede. Then again everyone on earth has plastics in their blood at this point so, cheer 100. Thank you for the bits, and yeah, so, that's an interesting thing. Yes, uh, from what I have researched, and I'm not like, this is not my professional job, but um, some, types of, some types of plastic will leach more chemicals than others, and some plastics, and it's when, when heated. Some other plastics, when heated, they, they leach more chemicals, and some of them leach more toxic chemicals. That's where the whole BPA thing kind of came from. Um, so there is food grade safe plastics. Um, but you gotta be careful. I actually yelled at my mom about this recently because she was making a, she does not cook at all. My Korean mom. And she was making a big ass batch of kalbi, like marinated short ribs. And she uses it from a bottle, but then she churches it up and adds extra stuff. But she was making a big batch and I saw her using this big plastic container and I was like, where'd you get that? She's like, oh, it's she laughed and she's like, oh, it's just a plastic uh, shoe box that you can use to put like storage and stuff. I was like, is that food grade? She's like, what do you mean? And I was like, that's not food grade plastic. You can't be marinating kalbi. Granted, it wasn't heated, but still, you can leach chemicals into the food. And so I, I kind of yelled at my mom about that. Um, but yeah, in general, I steer away from plastic and Teflon. I do not like using those because they do leach chemicals. Um, I researched that while storing things in plastics is fine. Cooking with them is, yeah, because when the plastic heats up, it releases the chemicals. Yep. Um... Uh, read that specifically while researching sous vide. Yeah, another reason why I am more comfortable using a stainless steel pot for my sous vide. Um, I do understand that yes, it is uh, in a plastic bag, but those are food grade safe plastic bags, so they are able to handle the heat. Yeah, there was even a water pipes lined with plastic now, so using tap to avoid plastic in bottle is, oh well, oh, I didn't even know that she's sensitivity. Oh crap, this air fryer is heavenly. I somehow didn't ruin the sweet potato fries. Nice, nice. I made two potatoes worth and I think I'm about to eat them all. That brings my post dinner, give the air fryer a world tally to a head of broccoli, a head of cabbage, that's a big ass head of cabbage, two zucchinis, two sweet potatoes, salt, olive oil, parm, garlic as needed. That sounds like a royal feast. Oh my God, you eat so healthy, I love it. What was I doing? Egg, I need an egg. Egg herd. Eggsy for the Lanas. That's wonderful. I'm so glad you're enjoying your air fryer. I really love my air fryer. It, um, 
One of the best things about it is that it's so it's so multifunctional. So it saves a lot of counter space because I got rid of my um, dehydrator and I got rid of my toaster because my air fryer does dehydrate dehydrating and it's also a toaster. Malin was actually complaining earlier. He's just like, what happened to the toaster? Like, do we not have a way to make quick toast besides like using the griddle? I was like, you can use the air fryer to toast. He's like, how? And I was like, the setting that says toast. <laughs> it even says like how many slices and what shade you want it. It's the exact same criteria when we had a toaster. It's like, click how many slices, click how, what color, what shade you want it. Toast? Yeah. I need to give him orientation. Ooh! Nice. I forgot to oil the pan, um, but it's it has a very nice non-stick to it. Every I really think my um, putting the extra work into expediting the seasoning of Lana's pan. And even it doesn't know, this is like a five inch cast iron pan that I got. And we use it just for my dog's treat redemptions here on stream. And because it's the only one that's not Lodge brand, it's not as well seasoned. I actually got it from Daiso, which is a Japanese $1.50 store, but it's, they got like pretty good, pretty for a dollar store, Daiso is great. American dollar stores, not so much. I probably would not buy a cast iron from them, but Daiso is a really nice, technically $1.50 store. This was not a $1.50, this was like five or six dollars. But um, I just bought it, it was like the cutest thing. And also Daiso, because it's a Japanese store, um, and a lot of the apartments in Japan tend to be a little bit smaller, and so they have lots of mini sized things, which is good if you live in an RV. Like if you get, we have an RV too, so when we do RV trailer shopping for the kitchen there, I got everything from Daiso, because it was like mini sizes. Like even the little cupcake pans are like little mini cupcake pans. So it's great, and um, that's where I got the little mini cast iron, and I love it. But because it's not as well seasoned, I've been putting a lot of work into seasoning it. One hour every day, I season it, I season it, I season it. Um, trying to get a really nice nonstick coat, and it's paying off. Like, this is so much smoother than it was a week ago. I can't imagine what it's gonna be like after doing this for a month straight. Pretty excited. I, by the way, I get like a hard on over cast iron seasonings. Anytime I go to another streamer's uh, stream and they're, they have cast iron, I was always like, look, can we see a close-up of cast iron? And when they do it, I'm just like, oh my God, that's so sexy. I love cast iron. I have a tiny collection of cast iron. I even have a cast iron wok, but that's a stupid thing. Why the hell would they make a cast iron wok? It's the total opposite purpose of a wok. Woks are for quick heating, quick frying. Cast iron is the opposite. It holds heat too well, and it's not good for quick temperature changes or quick frying, so. It was a gift from some relatives. They knew I like cast iron, so they got me a cast iron lock. The most ridiculous thing I own. Thank you, thank you. Oh boy. Hey, what's up, Naughty? How are you? I hope you're having a great stream. I am having a great stream, Naughty. How are you? How is your day going? Sorry, I'm a little bit behind on chat. I was going on a tangent, but nice to see you. I like all the names we've been getting lately. A lot of Japanese sounding names. When I see Naughty, I just want sushi. Naughty? So good. I eat it a lot. What was I getting? Cheese shredder. That's what I was getting. My little tiny cheese shredder. So this is for the puppy dogs. This is a channel point redemption where you can get Lana a treat. That's my golden retriever. Exclamation point dog. She is, I think, turning nine years old this year. November 15th. Oh yeah, so, oh my god, that's like in 15 days. 16 days. Lana will be turning, I think, nine years old. Okay, we gotta let it cool for a second. You know the rules, dog. You gotta let it cool. I'm not gonna let you burn your puppy tongue. What kind of puppy mommy would I be if I let you burn your little puppy tongue? So she got um, maple glazed, maple glazed breakfast sausage, uh, Tillamook cheddar cheese, and one egg. We have to do it as a scramble because when I was making her omelets, she would inhale the omelet whole and then throw it up later. So now we have to do um scrambled so that she, you know, doesn't inhale the whole damn thing in one bite. Okay, there's that. Okay, so that's Lana. So Lana's Treat Redemption, compliments of Jelly Belly. I didn't put the chili flakes! Fuck, oh well, we'll do that later. Okay, I think the next step, we're gonna take a sip of our delicious wine we stole from my husband's collection. And we're gonna ponder the duck next. Um. 
Yeah, it's because most homes in Japan cities are tiny. Yes, my sister lives in Osaka, and her whole apartment was smaller than my kitchen. Yeah. It was it was smaller than my dorm room, I'm pretty sure. Granted, she somehow had a kitchen and a bathroom and her sleeping area, and all of that was smaller than my dorm room in college. It was so tiny. So my husband and I went to visit her, and then we went we went to Japan to visit my sister, and then we went to Korea to visit my family, because um, my mom's side of the family, I'm half Korean, so a whole bunch of my family still lives in Korea. So we went to go visit them, and uh, I remember my husband and I were sleeping on her floor and, and like we were we were like sardined together. It was like my sister, me, my husband, like two feet and then the kitchen. <laughs> it's tiny. Yeah, it was really tiny, but we had a lot of fun. And her bathtub was awesome. It was like square, but it was a, it was a standing shower, but the sides were up high enough that technically you could fill it with water and sit in it, but you obviously couldn't stretch out your legs. But it was like, yeah, it was actually a very genius style. Like they should have that in RV trailers. That would be genius because our RV trailer bathroom, it's a standing shower. But if they would have built up the sides as tall as like a bathtub, then you could wash a baby or a toddler in that, but they don't have that. Maybe because they, they think that's wasting too much water in a trailer. That's why they don't do it, my guess. Um, when confronted with new people, overlook the obvious. I feel from now on that one. Wait, what? Uh, you make cupcakes in an RV. I don't know what to say. Well, I haven't done it yet. I will someday. No, you can also use um, those mu the cupcake tins. You can use them to make like little uh, egg cups, like little omelet cups, little egg scramble cups. There's a lot of things you can do in like muffin thing. Also, I have freaking kids, Cabeza. Yeah, if we're out camping or whatever, and I have all the basic necessities in the travel kitchen, like egg, flour sugar shit and my kids are having a bad day and they're melting down and they want to go home and the only way to re to fix the situation is to make them some cupcakes you best bet this mama gonna make some cupcakes in the middle of the fucking forest i do whatever i need to do to make my babies happy including cooking cupcakes in the middle of the fucking forest yeah because you know that make jace happy uh da, 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 da. cat says i'm not dead work is kicking my booty but I still work most of the nights. Thank you, Kat. I really appreciate that. I'm so sorry that work is kicking your booty, but I hope, I hope it gets better. You can always kick work's booty back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you? I don't know if you can. Um, no, I'm not dead yet. I'm not dead yet. I feel happy. I think I'll go for a walk. No? Nah? Holy grail? Anyone? Want a python? Let's go. True, said Stevie says. I think it's been five or six years since I used my oven. I used the air fryer twice tonight. A whole new world. Yeah, right? Agreed. Totally agreed. My biggest problem with my oven is it takes 20 minutes to preheat and then all the other stuff, right? Yeah, I, I'm addicted to my air fryer. That's actually why I gave up on the poking my husband for double ovens. I do cook a lot and then I have other people cooking my kitchen a lot. So we're always fighting over the oven. I really, really want to double ovens, but we're not going to do that. Rock! Thank you so much for the single loops. I appreciate you. Thank you, Brock, for that. Um, but yeah, since we got the air fryer, I no longer need double ovens. Granted, the air fryer is significantly smaller than a full-size standard oven, but for the most part, I can be cooking two things at once because a lot of the things you don't need a full-size oven to bake. Like, you can cook a whole chicken in that air fryer because I got the Ninja XL fuck 10-in-1 thing. So because we have the air fryer, I actually don't need, I don't need double ovens. And also... The air fryer fits where the microwave used to be, and then the new microwave is sitting over on the counter. And because it fits there, and the wattage is less than an uh, oven, it's easier. Like, we don't have to hire an electrician to do all that stuff and fix the circuit breaker or whatever. So it's like a, a cheap, quick fix to double ovens. So more or less, I feel like I have double ovens without having to bug my husband to remodel our kitchen. So I like it. I, and I do. I use the air fryer. I'm pretty sure every fucking day. I use the oven a couple times a week. Yeah. Um, what up, Hedgie? How are you? This is a Hedge Pig Bread. Give me your drink. You want some wine? I got a whole bottle. I got a whole bottle, hubby. Hubby, honey, try some. Uh, did you stream today? How 
How was your stream? What'd you get on with tonight? What up, Abhana? Welcome in. Yes, Lana. Thank you for reminding me. Here you go, puppies. Say, thank you, Jelly Belly, for my tree. Lana's very happy. Thank you. Cabeza. I've literally recommend like six different Terry Gilliam movies to you. How dare you question my Monty Python knowledge, you Philistine. Thank you for that, Cabeza. Yes, you were the one who made me watch the cheese skit, didn't you? That was fucking you. Oh my god, that was like 15 minutes of, well, well, it was funny. Oh my god, it was like funny and painful at the same time. Mostly funny, but I, you were the one who made me watch the cheese skit. That was hilarious. Um, they are great with space efficiency. Yeah, exactly. Unreal. If I, I don't think the RV trailer has the space. Like, honestly, no. Could we do that? Fuck, if we could do that, I would do that. So the trailer we have has a little, like, RV style standard oven. I would fucking take that oven out and put an air fryer in it instead. Hands down. If, if I could remodel it or like, because... RV uh, ovens are notorious for being pieces of shit. They, they don't heat evenly, they're finicky. Half the time I, my, the pilot light thing won't work and I, like, it won't like, turn on, or I'll be baking in it and halfway through baking it turns off by itself. Like, the thing's a piece of shit. If I can take that out and replace it with another air fryer, oh, let's go. I should actually ask my hu husband like, if that's a possibility, if we could take that out, because I guarantee freaking tea you Oh no, it's interesting. I think the air fryer might take up more electricity and technically, I think the oven might work without electricity because it's gas. I don't know, I'll have to ask my husband about it, but I like this idea. Thank you, Grace, for the bits again. Yep, uh, Jelly Belly, yeah, I'm in there. Yeah, you're in there. Lana's eating your treat right now. Melon is at a Halloween party. Um, Caddy, I tried the mustard smoked sausage. Oh yeah, how was it? It's good and has a wonderful flavor. The mustard flavor is not strong, but it does have a whole mustard seed in it. Okay, nice. I love the uh, mustard and sausage goes hand in hand, right? So if the mustard's already built into the sausage, that's just efficient right there. Time Bandits. Oh, you're the one. Yeah, okay. I did watch Time Bandits. I forgot I did watch Time Bandits before. I didn't remember the name, but when I watched the trailer and parts of the movie. I was like, oh wait, I have seen this before. Uh, Onio says, I'm going to be lurking. I have to be up at 3 a.m. to take my sister to work and also Mark's seeing the Northern Lights. <gasps> you get to see the Northern Lights? Oh my god, I'm so envious of you. That's awesome. Thank you so much for hanging out with us in chat. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun chatting with you. Thank you for all the help and all the tips uh, saving my dinner from me. And also, we hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much for the lurk. Have a great night. Enjoy those lights. I really, really want to see the Northern Lights. I don't have a lot on my traveling bucket list because I don't like to travel, but someday I do want to see the Northern Lights. Um, uh, but it's okay. I'm a lumberjack. Are you a lumberjack? That's awesome. Hello, Brock. How are you? Welcome in. If you haven't seen Terry Gillian directed Bruce Willis, Brad Pitt, Masterpiece 12... Whoa, back the fuck up. Terry Gillian directed 12 Monkeys? I didn't know that. Interesting. I think I thought it, I thought someone said it one time and I thought it was a joke. I didn't know he really directed that. But yeah, 12 months, you know me. You know me and my post-apocalyptic movies. I love them. Yes, dystopian futures, totally my jam. Uh, yeah, I have seen 12 Monkeys many, many times. I love it. I love it. That, I really like Brad, I think I like Brad Pitt in a lot. Brad Pitt's a great actor. Some of his older stuff from the 90s, fucking classic. Like, there's a reason why he is an A-list actor. Brad Pitt's really good. I know he's a pretty boy and people flip him shit, but we're celebrating him tonight as well because he was in Interview with a Vampire. Or Interview interview of, interview of with a Vampire. We are doing that uh, as the theme for tonight for National Vampire Day. He was amazing in that movie. I also liked him in Legends of the Fall. He was good in that. Obviously, Oceans, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and all the other things that came after. But I fucking love Brad Pitt. Tom Cruise! I don't dislike him. I like him. He's good. I'm not a huge fan of him, but I do like him in certain roles. I do like Mission Impossible. Great soundtrack, by the way. Um, there's a TV series, 12 Monkeys, is worthy too. True Sensitivity, what streaming platform is that on? Or is it on a streaming platform? Rose, that is Lana. She's, she's frolicking. She's around here somewhere. How are you doing, Rose? Welcome back in. Uh, 
Is it possible to see the northern lights someplace warm? Cabeza? No. Well, very rare occasions. Very now and then there will be a huge solar flare, which I think sometimes makes it so you can see the northern lights as far down as where I am, like in Seattle. But generally speaking, I do not think so. I do not think so. Um, not currently. Some would need to be a bunch more active. Yeah, like so big ass solar flares. There was a big ass solar flare a couple years ago, and they're like, FYI, guys, you can see the northern lights and all these other places just for like this one day or for this short period of time. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, you don't you don't want to be able to see the northern lights south or more around the equator because that would be that would be bad for people on Earth. Yeah. Uh, I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. We are celebrating vampires today and injecting lots of meat with a stubby, sticky, stabby stick. Sticky, stabby stick. Okay. So we're going to do duck next. What kind of style of duck did we say we're going to do? What, what, what was my theme? Oh, Queen of the Damned. Queen of the Damned duck. Here's my thought. I want to do butter again, but I want to infuse it with truffle seasoning because I have truffle seasoning and I just think that sounds good. We're going to do an Asian flavor on the, the what is it, uh, and rice and chicken. We're going to do that kind of Korean style. So I think because we're doing Korean there, we're doing whatever the fuck that is right there. which is So a steak Diane, which we're calling a steak Lestat sort of thing, is technically not a French dish. It's, I think, English. And it's a take on a steak au poivre. Uh, so we're going to go French, I think. French, French-ish. I don't know. Is truffles French? Uh, I see truffles. I think French. But I think we're gonna we're gonna do that. Where's my thing? Hmm. It's two ducks. I have two duck breasts. Uh, we'll use this teeny tiny pot. Teeny tiny pot. Heard? I think we're gonna do. Is this still hot? Ooh, it's a little hot. Right? I think we're gonna do my teeny tiny pot that my mother-in-law gave me. Um, butter and. Butter, a little bit of garlic, but it's going to be big, chunky garlic so that it doesn't get sucked up through the syringe, and truffles. Truffle garlic butter? How can she go wrong? I think I like this idea. Okay, another stick of butter. Dude, we're going through a lot of butter today. Ain't nothing wrong with that. How big are my holes? Oh, those are pretty big holes. So we got we to gotta chop up our own garlic. Is this still good? I don't know. Probably not. I haven't chopped my own garlic in a week, like a hot second, because I've been using the pre mint stuff. But this one looks good. This one does not look good. We're just going to chop dish one. Okay. We think in Zelda cutting board or Star Trek cutting board? And Zelda cutting board. Zelda cutting board. Little tiny one. Uh, the TV series was on Sci-Fi, of course it was. So maybe it's on their app or Peacock. Uh, I think it might also be on Prime Video. Dude, if it's on Prime Video, that's my language. Uh, I got you. I, I know what you. I know what you're saying, True Sense TV. Uh, this is bad tourism policy. Why wouldn't they want Caribbean lights? Bad marketing. Caribbean lights can be its own thing. I think the Caribbean lights is when they have the jellyfish bloom, or is it? Is it algae or plankton or some shit like that? But the bioluminescent things where they bloom and then the waters are just covered in like glow in the dark sea creatures, that can be the Caribbean lights, which I would travel to see that too. That would, that's beautiful. You like row out, or like maybe not row out in a boat, but you take a boat out into the, the dark waters and then you wait for it to get really still and then you like turn off all the lights and then all around you just ends up glowing. I, I can't remember if it's plankton or it's not probably not algae. It's either plankton or jellyfish or something like that. But they bloom every whatever year for somewhat whatever reason. And it's actually gorgeous. I, I saw it on the internet a long time ago. All right, that's my butter. How much garlic? Probably a lot. Uh, how's your son and rest kids? They're good. They're good. Zelda. Yeah, we're going to go with the Zelda cutting board because I don't, we don't need the Star Trek cutting board. Also, if I could go back, I would have been far more diligent about oiling my, um, my custom wood stuff. 
I'm doing really good on the D20 soups and stuff where I'm, I'm oiling them like every other time I use them with coconut, like liquid coconut oil. And then this one I'm pretty good at, but the Star Trek cutting board, I got, I was lazy and I didn't know how much of a difference it would make. But if you have these like laser etched um, bamboo or wood boards, you have to keep oiling them to keep the design sharp. I didn't know that. Oh no, Kathy just invoked what could go wrong. Gonna sit and pray. Don't know if it counts as an atheist. Oh, uh, I am not religious at any, and in any ways, but I definitely. There are times where I'm like, fuck, just sit down and pray. Pray to all the powers above. Pray to the cooking gods. That's actually something I want for um, like Christmas one year is um, you're not allowed to buy it for yourself. It's called a kitchen witch. It's like a poppet or a little doll. And I think it looks like the chef. And um, it's, it's a little witch. It's like a... a, a old European folktale lore thing, but it's like a little dollar poppet and it sits in your kitchen and she's a little witch and she wards off spoiled milk, uh, burned food, and uh, something else. Like it, there's like a little, I think it's on Amazon, you can read about it, but they've got like a book and whatnot. But it's basically like a little uh, totem doll that is a witch that protects your kitchen from kitchen disasters, which I think is really cute. I wanted one of them and I asked my friend Jenny to make me one and she said she would and then I think she got carried away. Has a new boyfriend now. I, know. I wanted a little crocheted like ame, ame gurumi one or something, but it's okay. Um, is plankton when they are in a sex mode? Nah. I don't, I don't think it's a sexy mode time. I think it's, I have no idea. I don't know what it is. Clap! I know, right? Oh, it's Baby Yaga on a Shelf, Christmas favorite. What's Baby Yaga? I can't tell if you're trolling me or not. It's called the Kitchen Witch. It's a little, it's called the Kitchen Witch, and it's a little poppet or a little doll, and you hang it up somewhere in your kitchen, and she wards off burned food and exploding butter and all that shit. What was I doing? I need a knife. Which knife do we want? Small knife? We'll use this one. This is a good knife. It's not as nice as these ones. I think these are called the kitsune knives. This one, but the blade and the surface area is a little bit bigger. I need to get these sharpened, but I think for garlic, I need a slightly wider edge, but I don't want to use one of my big ass chef knives, so, cause I gotta go like that. That's what I gotta do. Yeah. I never liked Elf on a Shelf, by the way. Elf on a Shelf freaks me out. I don't know why. The idea of this little dude, like, one, he's narking on you to Santa, right? And he's just creepily watching you. I got enough shit watching with all the Alexa devices I have in my house. I don't need fucking Santa's minions watching me, too. Bullshit. Plus, my, but one of the good things about my kids being the way that they are, um, they, they don't give a shit about a lot of superstitions or like holidays in general. So I think, okay, I do think Jace is getting into Santa this year. Um, but in general, like my kids are not, my younger kids don't give a shit about the Easter bunny or Santa or any of that fucking shit. They don't care. They don't even know what's going on. They just know every now and then there's a big ass tree and they get presents. Baby Yaga is an ancient Russian demon who travels around the house on chicken legs. Okay. It's a witch, not a demon. All right. Well, I don't want Baby Yaga. Baba Yaga. I don't want Baba Yaga. I want the opposite. I want, I think it's, God, it, it's not the UK. It was like, what is it from? It's like an old Norwegian, maybe? Was it Scandinavian? I don't know if it was a Scandinavian thing. Was it Irish? Nah, it's probably not Irish. I don't remember what it was. I read about it once and I thought it was the cutest thing ever. Okay, we're gonna just chop these in big ass, big ass chunks. And then we're gonna smash them up too. Smashy, smashy, smash, smash. That way it gets all the garlicky flavor out. Um, Cause I want the garlic flavor, but I, I don't want it to be small enough to get up into my syringe. Maybe I should just smash the shit out of it. Oh, that works actually better. Yeah. Oh, garlic down. Maybe cut that in half. I just need it smashed up. I don't need to cut up. Smash. 
Smash! 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 Kathy, smash! You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Okay, that's pretty good. And then we'll just chop up the butter. That's enough. Elf on a Shelf, completely freaky. The Elf movie, genius, brilliant, amazing, and perfect. Yeah, I like Elf. I don't like Elf on the Shelf, though. That fucking scares me. Uh, not Baby, Baba, as a Russian for a grandmother. Oh, okay. Baba. So, that kind of goes in line with the holidays that we usually do. So, we do Christmas, Yule, whatever, you know. And then, uh, we actually celebrate Krampus on the first Saturday after Christmas. And uh, we have a big old Krampus party at our house with, and we invite like a whole bunch of people. And we do a white elephant gift exchange. So if you got some creepy shit for Christmas um, or whatever holiday you celebrate, if you got some creepy gifts for the holiday, you can bring it to our Krampus party and we exchange them as white elephant gifts and it's always fun. And if there's like debauchery and drinking, and it is family friendly though. We usually have a lot of kids there too. Uh, but that's usually when we celebrate, we have Krampus, we have a Krampus day and we have a Krampus party every year before COVID. I don't know what we're going to do going forward though. Going forward, I don't see us having 70 people in this house again. We used to have big ass parties where there was like 70 people and we just throw like a couple times a year, big, big ass parties, like barbecue, backyard, crazy shit. Lots of kids running around like crazy people. I just don't see that happening anymore. Like, even when everyone's vaccinated and everything, like, kind of returns to normal, I just don't, I just don't see people being like, oh, there's a party with 70 people. I want to go to that. I just don't think it's going to happen. Elf on a Shelf is meh, uh, but Hubby with a Chubby is the scary one. <laughs> hubby with a Chubby is pretty scary one. Have you ever seen a Snoop on a Stoop? Yeah, it's like a, it's like a gangster version of Elf on a Shelf and it's Snoop on a Stoop. I love it. Missed which. Wait, do you know, okay, you're supposed to do it all in one so I don't read the, the punchline. Okay, do you know why not underwear, pants, do you know why, uh, to get a better grip on their, Clab, I think I get it. That is a dirty joke. That is a dirty, dirty joke. Um, yeah, Cabeza correcting Clab. Clab, you're so dirty. What am I going to do with you? Don't get any dirtier than that, though. Jeez. Ugh. This is why we can't have nice things. All right. Um. All oh, right. I'm doing this. What? And truffle seasoning. Okay. So we're gonna heat this up. And then I need to clean this bitch. How do I clean it? Oh, please don't be a pain in the ass to clean. It's like the one thing that I judge all of my cooking shit on is how much of a bitch it is to clean. This one doesn't look too hard. Let's see. All right. And it also doesn't have to be cleaned perfectly because it's just butter and we're just putting more butter in it. Butter, butter. Oh, that was not smart. Yeah. Butter, butter, butter. Um, what are we doing? So we need... How long are we doing this? In the air fryer? Oh, shit. How long do you put a duck in the air fryer for? I have no idea. Well, it's like chicken, but fattier. So I do chicken at 375, but we want a crispy skin. So 400? 400 seems a bit high for a duck breast. Maybe 375. Okay, I say, I go, I go 375 for 20 minutes. How long, here, I have my Google pulled up. Okay. How long to air fry duck? Ooh, calm your tits. Air fry duck. Come on. Simple answer. No simple answer. Here we go. Uh, place duck in the air fryer basket and cook uh, according to this 400 degrees for about 15 minutes. Oh, I like that idea. All right. We're going to do what that says. Cursory, cursory, quick glance at the goobs said to do 400 for 15 minutes. So that's what we're going to do. But first, we have to inject it with butter, truffle, truffle butter. We're doing truffle butter right now. That's what's going on right there. And I need my stabby stick. Stabby stick heard. The cool thing 
Because this thing came with a whole bunch of cleaners, didn't it? Yeah. Does this actually work? Oh, you do work. Nice. I appreciate you. Always, 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 that's the most important thing when I buy kitchen stuff, is how easy is it to clean? Because if I get a great contraption, but it's impossible to clean, no matter how much I love it, I will never use it. Okay. You would have seen my wife's Don't know. Hmm. Clap. I love you. I'm going to delete that. Yeah. A little untasteful. Do you remember? I am a female. I identify as a female.